there, guys. Do you know how important your fingers, your thumb and your hands are? I mean, if someone were to come to me and they would like to trade one million ringgit for my thumb, no, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. But if they say 10 million, hmm, I might reconsider. I'm just joking. Now, it all has its own functions and that is what makes it perfect. So we have to always appreciate and take care of our body. I'm Shafiq Nazri, by the way, your host, and this is Active Lifestyle. Hey there guys, so today I'm going to show you an exercise that will help improve your overall posture, stability and strength. Now this exercise is simple and easy and can be done anywhere, anytime, no matter how busy your schedule is. Now the fun is just about to begin, stay tuned, let's go. So here we are at the college and I must say it is simply amazing. I mean, I've never been here before, but I could feel the positive energy and aura in the air. I mean, have you seen the lake? It is the perfect place to chill and recharge. Come on, I'll show you. Wow, it feels great here. I like it. Oh, there they are. Hey guys. Oh my God, that's so neat. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Come on here. Oh Hello, hello, Taylor's hello. College. Hello, Shafi. How are things? Hi. Hi. All right, you've had your breakfast? Yeah. 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 Oh. Okay. Hey, Shafi. Yeah. We are so glad you are be here. And your energy and your style is really good. And you can make the working out like a blast. Wow, feels like a blast, yeah? Well, I try to make the exercise as fun as I can. Not much of a chore. So, Shafi, what's on the menu today? Because we're all quite curious about what you have in store for us. I hope that's not too much intense. I'm ready for anything. Bring it on. Yeah, that's the spirit right there. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to share with you an exercise that will help improve the overall posture, uh, stability and strength. It's not going to be too intense, but it is doable. We're going to begin with the first exercise, which is the burpees. Yeah! It's like a, a normal push-up but you end it with a hop, a jump, right? Which you can consider an overall workout. It focuses on the upper body and also the lower body as well. The arms, the chest, the thighs, the bum. Firstly, of course, we're gonna get into a push-up position, yeah? Uh, uh, but before we get to the push-up position, we get into the squat first. Yeah, you're gonna have to squat, and then immediately you get into the push-up position, and then go on down, right? And then get to the starting position, back to the squat and give it a good hop. Just like that. But you gotta make it fast, all right? So again, push up and hop. One, one, and that's one, all right? Okay, so let's begin. And one, very good. Okay, it's on a race, no problem. Two, very nice, and three. Very good, you guys are doing well. Uh, but why are you so silent? <laughs> four! Come on, let's go, four! Okay, five! You gotta go lower, where's that push-up? Okay. Did I say five? I meant six! No. Come on, six! No. Yes, and finally, seven. Last one, last one, last rep, last rep, come on. Very nice. All right, so we begin our second exercise of the day, which is the high knees, all right? Now it's great, it really burns out the calories, especially around the lower body. Now, how would you want to do it? I need two hands in front of you, back straight, and then it's like you're hopping, but um, using, uh, taking turns with your knees, all right? So one, 
and then two. One and then two. But since this is a hit program, this is a hit exercise, you have to be fast, all right? One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Very good. A little high. Don't, 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 don't put your hands down, all right? Don't cheat, all right? Keep it at your chest level. And then one, two, one, two. Yeah, go as high as you can. Right. Now, it's not that hard, but you will feel it, especially more than thighs. Do you feel it now? All right, how about we try it? A thousand a day. I like that spirit. All right. Okay, let's try it out. Hands in front of you. All right, and we're gonna begin with the left knee, yeah? All right, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hey, how are you? Oh my Do you feel okay? Yeah. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. You guys did great. Wow. <laughs> so, where's the tension and pressure? Quite high. I'm tired. <laughs> you feel it in your thighs, right? Yeah. All right, now take a deep breath. And exhale. Deep breath. And exhale. Deep breath. Exhale. Very good. Okay, guys. You feeling hungry? Yeah. yeah! All right. I'll see you guys in the second segment. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> All right, so as usual, uh, after our fitness session, we'll always have our healthy meals that will keep you satisfied and energized, you know? It'll be delicious, of course. Hey, you are not gonna make us woke up and like, make us cook again? All right, all right. Well, you know, I understand that you students are always on the go, especially here in Taylor's, but I've already prepared it especially from home, okay? Yeah, we try to eat healthy, but you know how busy we can be with our assignments and our schedule. I understand. I mean, I was a student back then, but moderation is key, all right? Don't pressure yourself too much. So, what's the dish of the day? I mean, we may be students, but we still have taste buds, you know? Okay, trust me, it's delicious. Let's see what you brought. All right, so here I've got with me roasted cauliflower, with chickpea salad. Impressive! Wow. Yeah. So, well, don't be too impressed by yourself. <laughs> well, I mean, it is a must-try dish. If you are always on the go, you don't have time, and you're looking for a quick and delicious meal, what are the ingredients in it? All right, so we've got cauliflower, chickpeas, olive oil, we've got cumin, parsley, and, and so on. Yeah. I mean, the ingredients are easily attainable at any local supermarket. That looks pretty simple. How did you prepare it? Well, we need to chop the cauliflowers first, yeah, and then rinse along with the chickpeas, and then just put it on a baking sheet. Uh, toss in some, I mean, just season it with some salt and pepper, uh, cumin, paprika, and then bake it in the oven at around 400 Fahrenheit for around 20 to 25 minutes until golden brown. Mm, yeah, that's pretty simple, but what do you do with the lemons? Well, once the uh, cauliflower and chickpeas are ready, just bring them out and squeeze the lemon juice all around it alongside with some olive oil if there's any remaining. And then? Then, once everything is done, just transfer them to a large bowl, give it a good stir, and serve it well. 
What about the nutritional value? Well, yeah, but I think I've been talking too long. How about one of you eh, try to check it on the internet? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. You want it? All right, go on. Uh, roasted cauliflower and chickpea salad is a nutritional dish that provides a variety of health benefits for the body. Uh, the cauliflower is a good source of vitamin C and K, as well as a dietary fiber and antioxidant. And okay, okay, okay. Let me continue. So the chickpeas are a good source of plant-based protein, dietary fiber, and various uh, minerals such as iron and manganese. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish this. Together, these ingredients provide a balanced mix of nutrients that can support overall health and well-being. Eating this salad can also help lower the risk of chronic diseases such as heart disease, diabetes, and certain types of cancer. Additionally, its high fiber content can aid in digestion and weight management. Wow, you guys are like dietitian experts. <laughs> so, as I mentioned, this meal is simple, but it's superbly healthy and delicious. So, I do hope that you will try this, you know? We will, Shafiq. Thanks for uh, showing your culinary skills today. It was quite nice. Yes. Not a problem. I mean, I love to share this knowledge with all of you. And you guys are excited and energized. Yeah. yeah. But remember that once you've done with your healthy meals, you gotta, you gotta get back to shape, all right? So you gotta get to the gym. Oh no, here we go again. Just kidding. We'll see you again, Shafiq. Next time as in later, right? Yes. Okay, now, check this out. Go on, pass it around. Wow. Yeah, give it a smell. Eh? Yeah, it is. I have to say, it really smells amazing. I know. I think it anything. Yeah, the, the smell has been in the room for way too much. Yeah. <laughs> I like the quality. Alright. Okay, I think we can go to the uh, cafeteria because I need to cook a larger portion for all of you, right? Yeah. Come on, alright. Hey there guys, Shafiq Nazri here. Now today we have a very special guest. She is a dedicated dentist who also finds time to pursue her passion in cooking. Now she is the winner and champion for MasterChef Malaysia season one and an inspiration to us all. Please welcome Dr. Izani Farhana. How are you? Hi Shafiq, I'm very good. Thank you so much and thank you for you know, coming to my little place here. That's <laughs> Rivella. Thank you. So Dr. Izani, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey as a dentist and also as the champion of MasterChef? Well, the story is, I think, a lot of coincidences and also fate, I have to say, you know, because um, my life journey seems to be very plain and simple. You know, I was um, you know, studying to be a dentist in Adelaide, Australia. Um, but at the same time, I just found my love of cooking there, especially with all uh, the fresh fresh produce when we go to the market, the central market. Um, so I learned a lot about ingredients and I also love watching cooking shows. And also when I was there in Australia, um, MasterChef Australia actually started. Okay. So I was an avid hardcore follower <laughs> and um, sort of wanted to try to cook all of the things that they, they cook in MasterChef. You know, when they make macarons, I wanted to make macarons. When they make croquembouche, I wanted to make croquembouche. So it's, I don't know, it's just um, um, an ambition in me, I guess, to sort of try to cook well, like how they do in MasterChef. So your friend told you there was an audition for MasterChef in Malaysia and you went for it immediately, <laughs> just, without thinking twice? No, yeah, just <laughs> <Okay>. like... <laughs> yeah, so I think I was meant to do it, I guess. So um, I went to the auditions and the judges loved what I made mm -hmm. and um, I was invited to go on the show. Uh, but uh, if I may ask, why didn't you become a chef from start? Did you actually have passion in being a dentist? My family uh, was very academic. Okay. You know, so we, we, my parents were teachers. So we, we were, you know, the traditional family that, you know, have to do well in school. Uh, yes, things like that. So I, um, 
it was quite a normal. I followed my my sister's footstep, footsteps as well. Mm. She's a doctor. She studied to be a doctor. So um, I wanted to be a dentist. Uh, so it's it's just um, an ambition. You know, you write in your school portfolio. Mm. Ambition, dentist. So it was pretty straightforward for me. And cooking um, was something that we do as a family. My mom, uh, she loved to cook. So uh, I'm just always used to being in the kitchen, mm. disturbing, making a mess, you know. Okay. So uh, I guess that sort of grew in me. And as I grew into, you know, a, a teenager, yes. I learned to read recipes, follow recipes. And then, especially when I went to study abroad, you know, we are all on our own. So uh, it's expensive to eat out. Yes. So we yes. have to learn to cook to ourselves. Cook. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then the opportunity came, <laughs> right? <laughs> the opportunity came. You just grabbed it. <laughs> okay. So if I may ask, what actually, you know, what actually gave you that spark that you, I, I know you have always been um, cooking. I think it's, it was also from the encouragement and also my friends, literally forced me to do it. <laughs> yes, just try it out. Yes, what could go yeah, wrong? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, they almost like fill up that application form for me. So, okay. so um, it's that kind of encouragement. And also, um, uh, yeah, a lot of people knew that I love to cook because during those days, you know, I took photographs of what I cook. And I also uh, posted it on Facebook and entitled the album MasterChef Inspired. Okay, so... Again, you had passion in cooking, but you had to make it straight that you wanted to become a dentist. Was there any challenges along the way? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, going to dental school and passing and graduating, that was uh, the ultimate goal of me, you know, studying abroad, not to like become yeah, right. a, yeah, okay. a chef. <laughs> so, uh, so I had to keep uh, that straight. Um, and uh, definitely was a challenge. Um, I mean, studying abroad and also uh, as a dental student, you have to work uh, with the local people. You know, you have to, in our practical, we are, we are treating uh, local communities. Do you have any advice for those that want to try to become a dentist as well, but has, has passion in other fields? I never expected to go down this route as well. You know, I expected to be you know, a dental officer. But um, once um, I had this opportunity, to you know, go into MasterChef, it sort of opened a lot of pathways for yes, me, you know, a lot of channels, and um, I guess with the opportunity comes responsibility as well, you know, for you to uphold yourself uh, and also your title, and also especially now when I have my own business that stands on the name of my championship, yes, uh, yes. it's a lot of pressure, definitely, and um, the brand, that the you brand, have to hold. As, yes, yes, definitely. And also, of course, uh, I hold on to the true honesty of what good food is. You know, it's uh, it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be you know all beautiful and things. But it's the taste. it comes down to the taste. All right. So, do you have like a, a motivational quote, something that you live by, something that drives you every morning? It's not really something that I think about. Okay. You know, I really don't have time to think about in the morning okay. when you know you're rushing the morning, you know, school rush with the yeah. kids and things like that. So, um, but um, I have to say, um, uh, having uh, having good faith and also um, living your life, uh, following your faith, is a good way to start um, getting that good pathway in your life, I guess. So if you you have a good foundation there, uh, you would know how to live your life the best way possible okay. and be guided, I guess. Okay, thank you yeah. so much. Thank you so much. So something that we can get from Dr. Izani is like, uh, you just got to put in the work. You know, you, you, you need to believe that everything is set up for you, yeah. but you got to start. You have to start. You have to have discipline, of course. <laughs> you gotta have discipline, but you have to start. Doesn't matter when, as long as you start and you don't give up. It is exactly true when I started this business. Yes. Yeah, because and, you know, you can't um, just dip into you know wanting to start a business true. and expect it to sustain. You know, you yes. have to. It takes time. Yeah, it takes time, Branding. and it's your responsibility and your own 
responsibility to make the business leave. You know, there's no one else that's going to do it for you. Exactly. Yeah. So things take time. Don't give up. Keep pursuing. If that is your passion, that is your dream, keep going for it. Never give up. Things take time. And go your own pace. You know? Go on your own pace. And remember, diversify. Don't just stick to one. Be open and go for it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, drink? Yes. <laughs> Thank you.